Mark L. Abbott, The Bells. I wonder who that is. Lexington started for the foyer. Victoria followed. Lexington reached the front door and opened it to find no one there. He stepped out onto the porch and looked back and forth on the driveway, but only saw their Packard 12 that was parked a few feet from the door. Who is it? Victoria asked as she walked up beside him. No one. I don't see anybody out here. He turned to her. Someone did knock, right? I heard it. Well, that's odd. He looked at the letter in his hand. I can't believe this. My father had a bastard child with someone. Somewhere out there, I have a brother. What do you think she meant by this home we built together? Maybe she meant it figuratively, like her heart was in their home or something. I wonder who she was. Laura, I mean. We'll pack up the letters and take them with us. We can sit down and read through them together and find out what really went on. Somewhere in the upper floor of the house, a bell rang. It sounded like a call bell. It was faint at first. The second time it rang, it was louder. Did you hear that? Lexington said. I did. Where's that coming from? The bell rang again, echoing through the hall above them. Up there. It's coming from the guest room. I don't like this. Remember I told you there were once service quarters? Well, each of those rooms had a call box in with a bell in them. I bet that's what that is. But why would it be ringing by itself? The house is wired in the walls. Could be rodents chewing on the cables or something. It's been known to happen. All of this is making me a bit peaked. I'm going to step out into the yard for a minute. You want water? No, I'm fine. I need some air. Go ahead and finish up and bring the letters. This is fascinating stuff. Okay, I'm going to go check on that call box first, then find the deed. You stay outside. Victoria leaned in and kissed him. She walked toward the car as Lexington closed the door. She took a deep breath, filling her lungs with the early autumn air, then exhaled slowly and strolled past the car and into the yard along the side of the house. She stopped to reread the letter she was reading. And when she was done, she looked back up at the house, then up to the bedroom window from where she had first seen the woman in black. She turned to look in the direction she had just walked and standing inches from her face, staring at her with eyes as black as sackcloth, was the woman. She seized Victoria by the wrist and said, Come here, the dead speak.